What's happening ladies and gentlemen, this is Min from Architecture Inspirations. Today I'm going to show you 10 tips for creating architecture renderings in Photoshop. Let's get started. Number 1. Use Layer Mask So what is Layer Mask? It is a non-destructive way to control the transparency of your image. That means that you can hide parts of the image without truly deleting it. So you can recover it anytime you like. For example, here I have an image, but I don't really like the background. So I could go down and click here to add a layer mask. Now with the layer mask selected, I can press B to use the brush tool and paint black on the part that I want to hide. If I press X, then the foreground and background color will switch and now I can paint white on the part that I want to make visible. There we go, you can see that this area is not transparent. So I can import a new background and place it under the original image like so. Now I can press V to use the move tool to position my image or press Ctrl T to transform it however I want. The cool thing about layer mask is that you can always go back and adjust it by painting black or white on the mask. When using the brush tool, you can hold Alt and drag the right mouse button up and down to change the hardness and drag left and right to change the size. A faster workflow is that you can make a selection before adding the layer mask. For example, if I want to replace the sky, first I'm going to select it by using the quick selection tool. Now click on this button to add a layer mask. As you can see, it actually removed everything else except the sky. And that's not what I want. So with the layer mask selected, I can press Ctrl I to invert the layer mask. And now the sky is invisible and I can add a new sky like so. Note that you can hold down shift and left click to disable and enable the layer mask to see the before and after. Ultimately, layer mask is perhaps the most fundamental and powerful tool in Photoshop. Using layer mask will give you a lot of control over your image. Number 2. Adding grass. If you don't want to render 3D grass, then you can always add it in Photoshop. Here I have a base render image, and I'm going to add a grass texture on top of it. I'm going to turn this layer off for now, and then make a selection of the grass area using the lasso tool. Then I'm going to turn the other layer back on, make sure that this layer is selected, and then click here to add a layer mask. Now I want to transform this image to make it fit better. But you can see that the layer mask will also move and transform with it. And this doesn't look right. So I'm going to click here to unlink the layer mask from the image. And now I can freely transform the image without affecting the layer mask like so. Then I can always link the two images again if needed. That looks pretty good so far, but it looks a little flat. So I'm going to use the clone stamp tool, right click and select the grass brush. Then I'm going to hold down alt and left click on the part of the image that I want to use as the sample. Next, create a separate layer for the grass brush parts. Now I can paint like this to create grass blades along the edge. Number 3. Adding cutouts Adding cutouts such as people and trees is a great way to make your render look more lively. Just import the PNGs of people and trees that you want and transform them to make them fit in your scene. Layer mask is also useful for creating your own cutout from a normal image like this. After adding a cutout, you need to add the shadows. The easiest way to add a shadow is to create a copy of that cutout. I can do that by holding down Alt and left click, then drag it to duplicate and move it below the original image. Then I'm going to press Ctrl T to transform it. I can also right click and click here to distort the image. Now I can transform the image like so. Remember to pay attention to the direction of the light source in your render. Next, I'm going to rasterize this layer, and then press Ctrl U to bring up hue and saturation. Now turn the lightness slider down like so. If that's too dark, then you can decrease the opacity of the shadow here. You can also blur it using the Gaussian blur filter, or even add a layer mask to fade out the shadow like so. Pretty cool, huh? Number 4. Adding textures. Adding textures can be essential for creating a good render. When adding materials, it's a good idea to use seamless textures so you can make copies and tile the texture like so. You can do it by using the move tool and hold down alt, then drag to duplicate. However, there's a faster way to do it. First, open up your seamless texture in Photoshop, then go down to edit, define pattern. 
then press OK. Now go back to the other Photoshop file, go down here and click this button. Then go up to Pattern and choose the pattern that you just created. Here you can set the scale to whatever works best for you. As you can see, this is a lot faster than copying the image again and again. If you make a selection before creating the pattern, then it will automatically mask it for you. However, notice that you cannot transform the pattern. So here's what you need to do. First, create a duplicate of this layer, then delete the layer mask. Now right click and convert it into a smart object. Then you can drag the layer mask from the previous layer to the new one. And now you can delete the extra layer. Now you can unlink the layer mask from the image and transform the image however you like. Number 5. Use Render Elements Some rendering software has the ability to produce render elements. Render elements, also known as render channels or render passes, are a great way to separate the different parts of a rendering such as diffuse, material ID, reflection, etc. These are very powerful images that you can use to composite your rendering in post-production software like Photoshop. So before rendering your image, make sure that the render elements will be exported as well. For example, in V-Ray for SketchUp, you can find them in the Settings tab, click this arrow here to see more options, and expand the render elements rollout and add whichever elements you want. In Inkscape for SketchUp, you can find them in the Settings window on the Capture tab, and check this box to export the material ID and depth channels. And in Lumion, you can choose whichever elements you want to export before rendering the image. Regarding how to use the render elements, I have created a more in-depth video on that topic so you can learn more about it there. Number 6. Adjustment Layers Now that your image is almost done, it's time to make some adjustments. Instead of using adjustments on the menu bar, you should use the adjustment layers by clicking on this button down here. These adjustment layers include curves, levels, color balance, brightness, etc. These are great for refining the look of your image. You can also apply the adjustment to a specific layer or group of layers by holding down Alt and left click to clip it. Instead of using adjustment layers, you can also use Camera Raw Filter. To do that, first, select the top visible layer and press Ctrl Alt Shift E to flatten all the images into a new layer. Then I'm going to right click and convert it into a smart object. Now I can go up here and apply a Camera Raw Filter. Then I can make adjustment here. Since this is a smart object, the Camera Raw Filter is converted into a smart filter. This means that I can always go back and edit it whenever I want. Number 7. Adding Effects In the past, I've shown you multiple effects to make your render look better, such as Bloom Effect, Lens Flare, etc. If you want to learn how to do those effects, then watch my Photoshop playlist. But in this video, I'm going to show you another effect called the Bokeh Effect. First, go on Google and find a Bokeh texture. Then just download one that you like, bring it into Photoshop, now we're going to change the blend mode to overlay. If that's too much, then just reduce the opacity. You can try other blend modes as well. And you can also transform it or use layer mask to remove parts of it if you like. Pretty cool, huh? Number 8. Use plugins. So I've mentioned Nick Collection multiple times in the previous video. But if you look it up, it's actually not free anymore. If you want to find the free version, then you have to download an older version, specifically version 1.2.11. I will leave the link in the description box below so you can download it. After you have installed it, it should work perfectly fine. Another plugin is called On One Effects. It's actually not free, but if you follow this link, you can get it for free. I'm not sure when this offer will expire, so make sure to get it quick. I haven't used this plugin much, but it seems like there are a lot of options for adding styles to your image, quite similar to Nick Collection. So test it out and see what you can come up with. Number 9. Keep your file organized. If you work with Photoshop, you will notice that the file will get messy really quickly. So it's a good idea to keep your file organized by naming and grouping your layers correctly. Here is how I do it. I usually group each section of the image by its category. You can do that by selecting the layers in that category and press Ctrl G to group them. Then you can rename it accordingly. 
From bottom to top, my categories are background, render files, which is where I place my base renders, ground planes, for any texture or images on the ground, entourage, which contains my cutouts such as people and trees, final edits, this is where I use adjustment layers and camera raw filter. Then finally, there's the effects group, which contain layers for lens flare, bokeh effects, or styles that I use from plugins. You can also right-click each group and assign a color so that you can easily differentiate between the categories. Remember that this method is most useful when you implement it from the start. The last and most important tip is resources. To create renders in Photoshop, you need resources for backgrounds, textures, cutouts, etc. For stock photos or backgrounds, I usually go to Unsplash or Pixels.com. These websites are also royalty-free, so you can use the images for any purpose. For cutouts, here are some great websites. And for textures, you can check my video on that topic. You can also check out my community website, arcinspirations.club. It's where I share tons of free resources, such as cutouts, textures, but also HDRIs and 3D models. And those are the tips for architecture renderings in Photoshop. If my workflow was too fast for you, or if you're still a beginner, then I suggest you take a look at these courses on Skillshare.com, who is also the sponsor of today's video. Skillshare is a learning community with over 22,000 classes in design, photography, and more. The premium membership will get you unlimited access for less than $10 per month. But as part of this sponsorship, Skillshare has set up a two-month trial for the first 500 people who sign up, so you can watch all of their courses completed for free. If that's something you're interested in, then go to this link here. I will also leave the link to the courses that I just mentioned earlier. If you're new to Photoshop, then watch this course on Fundamentals of Photoshop. If you want to add some styles to your render, then check out this course on color grading. There's also a course on creating a render floor plan. That's all for today guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, comment below if you have any questions. Stay inspired guys, and I'll see you next time.